Oaxaca is said to be a place where the North American plants reach their southernmost extension, and the same can be said for plants making their way up from South America where they converge at the ends of their northernmost ranges. With over 30,000 species of vegetation, Oaxaca has about 5% of the planet's total species. Plus, the pre-Columbian history of the area is also incredibly rich. We had the opportunity to travel briefly with two Mixteco men. They spoke to us in Spanish, but to each other in one of the dialects of Mixtec, a pre-Columbian era language spoken by the people who have inhabited the area prior to the Spanish arriving. Hearing them speak to each other as we drove past a 15th century Spanish cathedral, I couldn't help but to think of the bloodshed, enslavement, and theft that went into building these now abandoned structures. And I wondered what these two men think of the churches still standing in the heart of their homeland. It's hard to comprehend how our species can be so callous towards itself. I suppose that's why I love being out in nature. Somehow, these wide open spaces and fascinating forms life has taken bring me more into the present moment where my focus is drawn away from the fast-paced anxieties of modern life in the Western world and brings me into gratitude for being on a planet where magical places and fascinating plants like this even exist. We are what we think, and I think I love this place. zone has changed from where we just were and we're approaching a very special location and we are approaching this location with a purpose I'm excited this is this, is, this was like a main number one thing I wanted to see on the trip and if I did if we didn't see it honestly it still would be and have already been if we went home tomorrow I'd be like man that was such an epic trip yeah. <laughs> The genus Focaria has around 11 species of xerophytic woody shrubs, three of which are listed by CITES. The mighty Bujum, endemic to the Baja Peninsula, which you can see in some of my previous videos covering the region. Then there's Fasciculata, which is a highly localized species occurring in Hidalgo. And then, of course, my favorite, Focaria purpusi, or the Mexican bottle tree, depending on your degree of comfort with binomial Latin. I love the caudiciform-like morphology of the younger plants, and to me, Perpusi is somewhere between fasciculata and columnaris on the scale of Focaria visual morphology. It is also quite literally in between the two geographically as well, so who knows what geological or weather events could have split the lineage somewhere in the distant past, giving us the distinctly different, albeit somewhat similar plants, their species status. Perpusi is threatened with extinction, and it's listed as Appendix 1 on CITES, making international trade of the species highly illegal. Now, meanwhile, our Oaxacan friend explained to us that in the previous year, seven 18-foot-tall plants had been destroyed by a mining company going after the marble which lays beneath the limestone these plants are growing out of. Now, the plants were bulldozed not extracted and sent to the University in Mexico City, or any number of botanic gardens, local or international growers, or the collector markets, just bulldozed, destroyed, no cuttings taken, no seeds saved, no genetics preserved, quite literally wasted, like a 1970s mob boss in the front seat of his Pontiac. There may be a yet to be discovered valley with a limestone outcrop somewhere containing a healthy population of Perpusi unknown to botany. It's possible. After all, Oaxaca is a state of mountains with plenty of canyons that botanists have yet to traverse. And these plants seem to grow as tall as 20 feet here in some cases. There were plenty of plants, albeit in a tiny area. And thankfully, the terrain is treacherous and locally protected enough to keep out most. And those that enter without permission and a guide are gambling with their lives. When my sons are my age, these plants may only exist in collections and botanic gardens around the world. They may go the way of the dodo or the giant sloth, back into the cosmos as carbon. Possibly, billions of years from now, the particles from the last perpusi will be used in the birth of a new star, a new sun for a new earth, where life will begin again in all its complexity and wonder. So we're here at the uh the tip top of an area where they mine marble. And uh, out of this dark black, almost eh, grayish black limestone, you've got the uh, Tillandsias growing. 
And then you've got the Mexican bottle tree here. This is an exceptional plant. Related to the Acatillo that we have in, in SoCal, growing right on these, these cliff faces. A couple more. I can't get to those, guys. Oh, they're so pretty. They're so pretty. This is honestly the kind of spot where, like, looking at these, these folk area here, I could just sit here and just spend a half an hour looking at each plant and not even doing anything, just looking at it. Um, it it's really awe-inspiring to see. I have seen so many of the folk areas now in their natural environment, and to see the wide range of morphology types that the plant has, and just to see, that's my favorite one. Purpose Eye is my all-time favorite, and to see it grown out of the rock like that on the shady side of the rock, no less, it's just, uh, it's my church. It's church to me.